Hello there and welcome to Friendship Alliance Church. Uh, my name is Jason. I'm the pastor here. I want to encourage you to turn in your Bibles to Acts chapter 16. That's where we're going to be today. Acts chapter 16, verses 25 through 32. And uh, as you are turning there, man, it's been a week here on, on, in my world and everything. So uh, uh, this week was uh, my daughter's uh, first week of kindergarten. It's the last one to, uh, to start school. And so that was a uh, a lot of emotions were flying. I, I think uh, I think mom and dad were a little bit more emotional than uh, than Cece was. Uh, she did great. She's got good friends already, and we were so excited for her. But uh, I got to tell you, this week was so strange because it was so quiet. Like during the day, it is so quiet at my house, and and I just I don't do quiet well. I'm finding out like the the noise and the chaos. That's that's the norm. So to have it so quiet, it's definitely been. An adjustment this week, but uh, but here we are and uh, feeling blessed today. But uh, we're gonna go ahead and can wrap up this series that we've been on called Acts of Simplicity. We've been looking at uh, we're looking at in the Book of Acts at uh, some simple acts that were done during an extraordinary time and the impact that they had, and taking that same principle of of simple acts and how we can apply those to our lives as well. So that's what we've been exploring together. We started this off by looking at prayer and the power of prayer. Once again, the prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. And during the extraordinary times that we see in the book of Acts, the, the regular practice that the early believers, the early church had was they got together and they prayed. So we looked at prayer first. And then the following week, we looked at delegating, the power of delegating, empowering others, while at the same time, uh, more honing into our own strengths and our calling. And so we looked at the power of delegating in Acts chapter 6. And then last week, last week we looked at following, and specifically we looked at following when our surroundings don't make sense. So that's what we looked at last week, and today... We're going to kind of come full circle. So last week we looked at following. Today we're going to talk about staying. And really this message is going to be broken up into two parts. It is broken up into singing and staying. So that is the message today, singing and staying. But let me, uh, let me give you a little bit of backstory here as we enter into Acts chapter 16. Paul and Silas, they are, they are stripped down, they are beaten, and they are thrown into prison. The, the jailer in charge was ordered to watch them carefully. Don't let them escape. Don't let what happened uh, to Peter a little while ago happen to Paul and Silas. Remember, we looked at Peter last week and how him and the angel just waltzed right past through the guards and the prison doors. So the jailer put them in the inner cell to make sure it wasn't, wasn't easy for them to escape. Uh, put them in the inner cell and locked, uh, locked them both up with chains around their feet. So just like last week, to, uh, this week with Paul and Silas, once again, it looks bleak. They're, they have been beaten. They're awaiting most likely to be executed, uh, being locked away in prison here. So what was Paul and Silas's act of simplicity during a very bleak time? It was praying and singing. Look with me in Acts chapter 16, verse 25. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the other prisoners were listening to them. So during an extraordinary bad situation, a bad set of circumstances, the, the act of simplicity here was praying and singing. Now, now, I've touched on prayer over the last couple of weeks, so I want to focus in on the singing part. And my question for us is how? How are they, are they singing hymns to God right now? I mean, just think about it. They, they, they have been bruised and beaten. They have open wounds right here in this dirty, dingy, smelly jail cell with a bunch of other people, uh, most likely a, awaiting a, the end of their life, right? Like, how are they singing hymns to God? It's because, church, they understood that no matter the pain, no matter the heartache, no, no matter if the world was beating them down literally here, it could not take away, it could not disqualify who they were in Christ and the reward and the inheritance that they have in Jesus Christ. Jesus tells us this in Matthew chapter 5, verses 11 through 12. He says, Blessed are you when people, when people insult you, 
and persecute you, falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, he says, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets, uh, they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Jesus is saying this has been going on for a long time with the prophets. Uh, it's going to happen with you. It's going to happen to Christians afterwards. In this life, we will face trouble, Jesus tells us. And it did not take long for the early believers here to see these words that Jesus said come to fruition. Believers were being persecuted. They were being martyred. And here in Acts chapter 16, we see this taking place with Paul and Silas. Jesus also tells us in regards to this persecution here, that persecution, it takes on many different forms, not just physical. So often when we think of believers being persecuted, we think of it in a, in a physical aspect. But here he says that followers will also experience insults and false accusations. Persecution takes on many different forms forms and it's been going on since the prophets. It's going to happen with the early believers. It's going to happen going on to today that we see Christians and believers persecuted in different ways, shapes, and forms today. Jesus says when facing persecution to rejoice, not because of the the pain or the suffering, but because of our identity in Christ as his son or daughter. It's because our Savior, the the one and only Savior, says that there is a reward that is greater than anything that the world can throw at you and is greater than anything that the world can offer you. This eternal heavenly reward is not earned, it's not merited by, by good deeds or actions, but it is all made possible through Jesus Christ himself. And we see proof of this in 1 Peter Chapter 1, verses 3 through 4. Let me read these verses with you. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, it is all made possible by his great mercy. Amen. By his great mercy, into a, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And into an inheritance that can never, never, I'm going to say it a third time, that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance is kept for you in heaven. Tells me that the world can't do anything about it. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you and I as a son or daughter of Christ. Eva Piole was an Argentine maid who didn't know who her father was and she was desperately trying to figure out who was her father. And after doing some, some research and just, just digging into family records, she, she concluded that her father was a gentleman by the name of Rafino Otero, who was a rich land baron who died in 1983. Do, do we still call people barons anymore? I don't know. That's the way the article read. I, I haven't heard the word baron used to describe anybody. But anyway... Uh, she, she demanded a paternity. She, she believed in all of her heart that, that this gentleman, uh, this uh, Rafino Otero, was her father. So she demanded a paternity test. But the baron's estate was so against it. They didn't want her coming to the truth. It was so against it that they exhumed the body and had it replaced with another man so that she couldn't get a paternity test. But Ava, she persisted. And she got the the DNA test from the Baron's mother. And it was determined that, yes, this uh, rich oil Baron, this Rafino Otero, was indeed her father. And so through that, she got to know through through history who her father was. and And she received an inheritance that would equal about 40 million U.S. dollars today. It's just a wild story. There was, there was opposition there, wasn't there? There was deception. There was injustice taking place. But Ava persisted because Ava knew beyond the shadow of a doubt that her identity, her inheritance was directly tied to Rafino Otero. Church, no, no matter how much the world tries to beat you down, No matter how often we go through those times where we just say, I just want one thing to go right. You know, we've all been through those seasons. Like, I just want one thing to go right. 
No, no matter the trouble, no matter the pain, no matter the injustice that we all experience, it cannot take away your identity in Jesus Christ and the inheritance that you have as a son or daughter of his. Once again, it is an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade and is all made possible through Jesus Christ. And that is why, that is why Paul and Silas can sing here. And that is why you and I can sing no matter the situation today, no matter the struggle we may be going through or you may be personally going through today, no matter the headlines, we still have a reason to sing, amen? Because of who we are in Christ Jesus. We have a reason to sing because of that, amen? But let me move on to the second part of this message today, and that is the sting. Look with me in Acts 16, starting in verse 26. Suddenly, just, just like last week, there's a, a suddenly situation took place. Whenever you see suddenly in scripture, just know it's about to go down. And that's what we see here in Acts chapter 16. It's like suddenly there was a, such an earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once, the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains have come loose. Look at the extraordinary that is taking place here. The jailer, he woke up, and when he had saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But then Paul shouted, he's like, don't harm yourself. We are all still here. They stayed. The jailer here, he was responsible for them staying in prison, and right now he thinks they all escaped and he wants to kill himself. Because the jailer was told back in verse 23, like, keep them secure. We don't want them to escape. We don't want another Peter situation on our hands that we looked at last week. But just think of how wild and, and just, I would love to be a fly on the wall when this is taking place, right? This is just craziness going on. There, there's an earthquake that shakes the foundations. Prison doors have flung open. Chains are, have come loose. Like, if, if I were in this situation, if I had just been beaten to a pulp, awaiting most likely to be executed, the, the jailer has a big sword in his hand and the prison doors have flung open and my chains have come loose, like I'm out of there, right? I'm, I'm the road runner, beep, beep, I'm gone, right? I'm not sticking around. But that's what they did. The act of simplicity here was staying. And they stayed, they all stayed. Look at Paul shouted, don't harm yourself. Like we are all still here, we all stayed. Like he could have shouted the heck with you as they were running away from this prison. Church, sometimes following means going. And sometimes following means staying, amen? And, and staying faithfully can, can be more difficult than going sometimes. Paul, Silas, and the, and the other prisoners, they, they weren't guaranteed that their lives would be spared here by staying. Oh, if we, we stick a, if we stick around here, maybe they'll show favor upon us and maybe they'll let us go. They weren't guaranteed that. They weren't guaranteed. It, it, this was their chance to escape, but instead they stayed. In fact, I love verses 35 through 40 because later uh, they, they stayed there so faithfully that they refused to leave when the officers tried to let them loose. Like they're trying to get them out the door at this point and they won't go. Let, look at what Paul says in verse 37. He says, they have beaten us, uncondemned Romans, and have thrown us into prison. And now they want to put us out secretly. I mean, they want to sweep this situation under the rug. They just kind of, kind of want to get rid of us. They want to just, just get rid of us being the problem, right? But Paul says, no, let them come themselves and get us out. Like, that's how faithfully they were staying. Like, you want us to go? You're going to have to come and get us out of here. That's how much they were staying here. And sometimes staying, it, it takes greater trust in God. It sometimes it takes greater perseverance. It takes greater patience than going. When it comes to that, that job, like, oh, that job would be way easier, way better. But maybe God's asking you to stay in the current job that you have. Or when it comes to that relationship or, or maybe just that location in general, like it, it'd be way better if I lived over here instead of in, in this location right now. I, there's, there's greener pastures over there. And it can be so incredibly difficult sometimes when all you want to do is go. 
because it may be easier, it may be more convenient, but God is maybe telling you to stay today. Keep your spot in, uh, in Acts chapter 16, but I encourage you to turn in your Bibles for just a moment to Genesis chapter 26. It really kind of speaks into what we've been looking at here. Genesis chapter 26, verses 1 through 6. Let me share this encounter with you. Now, there was a famine in the land besides the previous famine in Abraham's time. And Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistines, in Gerar. The Lord appeared to Isaac and said, Do not go to Egypt. Live in the land where I tell you to live. He says, Stay. Stay. Don't go. Stay in the land for a while. And I will be with you and I will bless you. No matter if there's a famine going on or not. For to you and your descendants, I will give these lands and I will confirm the oath I swore to your father Abraham. I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and I will give them all these lands and through your offspring, all the nations of the earth will be blessed because Abraham obeyed and, and, and did everything that I required of him, keeping my commandments, my decrees and my instructions. So, Isaac obeyed and he stayed, stayed during the famine that was taking place in Gerar. Isaac, he, he logically thought to, to go to Egypt during this famine. Like, I'm going to greener pastures. I'm going to where there's more resources, where there's more food, where there's more water. It just makes sense to, to leave and to go to Egypt. But God tells him not to go to Egypt, but to stay. Despite the famine, to stay. And we see God miraculously protect him and his marriage through a, during a very tough time, in a very difficult place. God prospers him greatly because he stayed. And I want to encourage us to keep seeking God's wisdom and guidance. Continue. God, in his infinite wisdom, knows when you should stay and he knows when you should go. That's why it tells us in Proverbs 3, 5 through 6, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will keep your path straight. Whether that leads, that path leads to going and you're, it's a one-way ticket out of town or maybe that path is a, is a circle and you're supposed to stay where you are. The call to go gets a lot of attention, and it should. When, when people step out in, in obedience and say, here, here I am, Lord, send me, I'm ready to go. But sometimes God also calls us to stay. And we must be willing to, to answer either of those calls, to stay or to go, and to trust God with all of our heart, not, and not depend on our own know-how, our own mind, our own understanding. Amen? So, so we've looked at the, the act of simplicity here of staying, but now let's look at the kind of impact that it made. This simple act of staying had a tremendous impact. Look with me in Acts chapter 16, verses 30, uh, 29 through 32. After the jailer called for, for lights, he thought everyone had left. Uh, he rushed in, fell trembling before Paul and Silas. He, he brought them out and asked Paul and Silas, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They replied, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and all the others in the house. Paul and Silas, once again, they, they, could, have, they could have bolted out of that prison. And I wouldn't blame them, right? And it, but if they did, if they, if they just fled, then verses 30 through 32 don't take place here. The story ends with the guard taking his life. Instead, they stayed and they shared the good news to the one that was in charge of keeping them in chains. And it's through that message that he's going to be set free, ironically. And not only that, they were able to share the gospel to the others in the jailer's household as well. Just despite all the, the craziness, the, the earthquakes, the cell doors, the, the chains falling off, the perfect opportunity to flee. They stayed and they shared the good news to the jailer and his household. So to summarize this, the, the act of simplicity here that we see, it was praying and it was singing, knowing that nothing in the world could change the eternal heavenly outcome of a son or daughter in Christ. 
And also we see that the act of simplicity was staying, staying when the extraordinary was taking place all around them. Church, once again, may we be willing to answer the call to stay or to go and trust God with all of our heart and lean not on our own and depend on our own understanding. Amen. Amen. Would you join me as we close together in prayer? Father, we come before you. We Once again, we thank you for this time. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. And uh, I pray, Lord, that you would take this message and apply it to our hearts and to our lives. We, we, we truly seek you in your infinite wisdom, whether we should stay or go in whatever situation of life may be presenting us that scenario, Lord. I pray that we would respond faithfully when it is time to go, that we would respond faithfully when it is time to stay. And I pray that we would know in our heart of hearts that no matter what we may experience here, it cannot take away who we are in you as your son and your daughter. It cannot take away the, the place that you have prepared for us in heaven. And for that, Father, we are eternally grateful. May we live a life worthy of the calling that you have given us today. Whether we are staying, whether we are going, may we share your gospel wherever we go. We thank you and praise you once again for this time. And all God's people said, amen. Amen. I love you so much, Friendship Alliance Church. I want to thank you so much. Uh, for tuning into Church Online. Uh, if you think that someone else could be blessed by this message today, we encourage you to please like, share, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Facebook page. Uh, we're active on all those things. Be sure to check out our website. Uh, you'll see updates there. There you'll see uh, ways to do your tithe and offering by clicking on the giving link. Also, if you go to our website, uh, go under weekly messages, you'll see the video of today's message. Along with a section called Deep and Wide, these are follow-up questions to today's message. We encourage you to check those out as well. Uh, look at the video description uh, on this video here. You'll see how you can get involved in our prayer chain, all the different ways that you can connect with us, the songs that we did at our in-person service. So we encourage you to check those out as well. Uh, I want to make you aware, if you live in the area, this coming Wednesday at 6 o'clock, we're having a church barbecue. Uh, if you want to bring something, great. If not, just come as you are. Just be a great time of great food. And uh, we're meeting here at the church backyard at 6 o'clock. want to make you aware of that. Uh, some great things are coming up uh, on the horizon. We're, we're going to be sending some of our own to, uh, to the mission field in October. So I want to continue, continue to, urge, uh, continue to uh, pray over that trip that is coming up. And uh, we're just so excited to see how God is moving through this, uh, through this church. And uh, if you're joining us online, we firmly believe that you are just as, just as much a part of this church as well. So I want to thank you so much for being a part of the Friendship Alliance family here. Uh, God bless you. Have an awesome week. And we're going to start something brand new next week. Can't wait to share it with you. So you got to tune in for next week. Uh, once again, have an awesome week, church. And God bless you.